Emily Galagoski, live at the SOCAP conference at Fort Mason uh, with Just Good TV and Women 2.0, here with Jacqueline Novogratz, CEO and founder of the Acumen Fund. Thanks so much for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here. So tell us a little bit about the work that you do, um, that you and your organization undertakes, and how you knew there was a need for a group like the one you started. So, so Acumen Fund is a nonprofit venture capital fund for the poor. We've invested about $50 million of charitable money into companies in the developing world, Pakistan, India, Kenya, Tanzania, that are building companies that serve the poor with health care, water, housing, alternative energy. We started it in 2001 because it was very clear that the markets alone were not solving problems of poverty. They were creating big divides between rich and poor, um, great, great efficiencies, but not reaching the very poor. And on the other hand, charity by itself was never going to end poverty nor even make a, a big enough dent in it. That there had to be something in the middle, and we call that patient capital. We'd love to see a new asset class where if we thought about philanthropy and the money that we have at our disposal, and instead of just giving it away as handouts, actually invested it, we could really build companies and programs that could impact millions of people. And what's been exciting over the last few years is that we have indeed invested $50 million. It has brought $200 million additional dollars into these underserved markets, created 35,000 jobs, and really delivered to tens of millions of people better sanitation and health care and housing in ways that, uh, frankly, is extraordinary to witness. And I'm curious, you know, a lot of this conference is focused on mobile technology, but in the places that jobs are being created and that you work the most, what role have other technologies played in really getting people to work? Um, well, sometimes they're very simple technologies. So if you think about a farmer who's got an acre of land, um, he needs seeds, he needs fertilizers, but typically, again, the markets have not seen him as a viable consumer, and charities often give them the wrong seeds and the wrong fertilizers at the wrong time. And so we've seen really well-designed drip irrigation systems that the farmer can afford and that ultimately increases his or her yields two to three times. Uh, IDE India has sold over 400,000 systems to these small-scale farmers. We've seen um, better hybrid seeds, high quality, low prices, Just thinking about the distribution systems to allow them um, access really changes their lives. Uh, simple technologies like UV filtration systems to take dirty water in rural village areas and filter it into clean drinking water been sold at a price that the people can afford. Um, a, a simple $10 solar light or solar torch, which a person can use as a substitute for kerosene. Most poor people in the, in the developing world, and I would say 1.5 billion of them, typically spend 20, 25% of their monthly income on dirty, dangerous, highly polluting um, kerosene, which is also really bad for your health. Well, if you can offer a substitute of a $10 solar light, they can leave it out in the sun all day, it will recharge the battery, and at night they can use it to light their home. It's safer, it's cleaner, they ultimately make more income. The kids get to go to school and you see real change. So they're very simple technologies, but they're designed in a way that the poor, the poor understand value and can afford. And I'm curious about your organizational structure around the world and really how you know when someone might be a good fit for Acumen. What kind of character traits do they do those individuals possess? The entrepreneur or the people we hire? I guess both. Maybe okay. start with the entrepreneurs. Okay. So Acumen is a nonprofit. Uh, we're registered as a 501c3, so when people give us money, they get a charitable write-off. We've got a headquarter in New York, and then we've got offices in Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, Hyderabad, India, Karachi, Pakistan, and Dubai. Each of those offices hires mostly local people and then is surrounded by the, a business community that's really committed to making things work. We look for people on our team who aren't that different from the people we look to invest in. They're curious about life. They're, they're, they're exceedingly alive. They're passionate. They're skilled because we build very complex companies. Um, they're unafraid to challenge the status quo, but are driven more by solutions than they are by focusing on problems. Um, 
and they know how to laugh at themselves, which I think is really key to what it is that we need to do. The entrepreneurs would fit that profile. I would say that we look for three specific things when we are focusing on whether we invest in someone's company. Do they have vision to reach at least a million people? Do they have a management team around them so that they can do that? And then is their business plan one that we believe in can be sustainable, in other words, cover its cost, and can it scale, ultimately reach at least a million people? And in your book, The Blue Sweater, um, which you're currently sort of touring the country talking about, um, you had mentioned leaving traditional banking to pursue some non-traditional funding sources. And I wonder what your advice is for sort of people in their 20s and 30s who are interested in doing work with social impact and maybe afraid initially to sort of stray from the beaten path. Um, you know, without being glib, just do it that I was recently, I just, I just spoke at Cornell last week, and this came up over and over, that I think this next generation is smarter and more connected and more worldly than mine was by a country mile. I had never left the country when I was 22 years old, although I'd always dreamed of it. Um, my parents thought it was a really bad idea. Uh, they were uh, incredibly unhappy at the fact that I was going to leave a very comfortable, secure banking job. Um, and this was a time when there was no internet, there was no uh, email, I didn't have a television, and it cost $13 a minute to make a telephone call. So it was real isolation. And the point is, when you're in your 20s, or even your 30s, it's just a mistake. And the learning that happens in that time when you're in another country trying to create something that no one's ever done before, not only about how the world works, but about yourself, changes you forever. And you know, Aristotle, when he talked about happiness, would say, you need to build those things inside of you that no one can take away from you. Well, there's nothing like an experience that makes you grow as a person that nothing can ever nobody can ever take away from you. So I think that as a society, we focus sometimes too much on the wrong things, title, position, salaries, when in the long term, what we measure our life by is meaning, relationships, joy, accomplishment, experiences. And I think if you follow that path of building those things, you will le it will lead you to a place of real contribution. It will lead you to a place of real meaning. In closing, I'm curious about organizations that are on your radar um, that you think really make that contribution. Who else are you sort of keeping an eye on that's doing valuable work um, that's worth spreading the news about? Oh, so many organizations. I look at Willie Foote and Root Capital and, and feel that the work that they're doing is really important in working with farmers in Latin America. I think what Wendy Kopp has done with Teach for America is just releasing unbelievable level. Uh, energy and leadership all over really the world now. Um, I look at Ianco on energy and Endeavor on building an entrepreneurial class and Kiva on the next generation of microfinance. Uh, we're all standing on the shoulders of giants like the Grameen Bank and, the Sh and Shore Bank. But all of these individuals are thinking about the future in a way that I find uh, really thrilling. But there's so many. And that's just really a smattering. We could talk all day. We could talk all day. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I really appreciate the time, Jacqueline. Have Thank a wonderful you. time and uh, get home safely. I will indeed. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank this you was fun so to much. Talk with